Is this the best phone ever from Google? Let's find out. Dave Taylor here and I'm looking at this. This is the Google Pixel 4 XL. XL is extra large. It's a pretty sweet new phone. So obviously running the very latest version of Android as you would expect from Google, but let's talk about the specs. So features a 6.3 inch quad HD plus OLED screen. It's a beautiful screen running at 90 hertz. So it has a really fast refresh rate. The resolution is 1440 by 3040. That's plenty of resolution at 537 pixels per inch. That is a really dense screen. It's no wonder it looks so good. Also features Gorilla Glass 5. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> I just did something. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but features Gorilla Glass 5, which makes it a pretty rugged phone. But of course, you're probably going to want to use something like this, which is the case that actually came from Google. Google sent me all sorts of stuff. Here's the box from the original phone. I actually have an unboxing video. If you want to see everything that's in there, go check that out for sure. Now, it's powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 and has an Adreno 640 GPU and Pixel Neural Core. It's a lot of chips, a lot of processing. It's a pretty fast and powerful phone. And when you get to the photography, this is where it's really a standout, but we're not quite there. Bluetooth 5.0 aptX HD. So if you're using wireless devices, you really want those that support aptX HD ideally, but at least aptX and it will just give you better sound for sure. The battery is pretty hefty. So the only difference between the 4 and the 4XL, there's two differences. One is size. This is 6.3 inches on the screen and the 4 is a little smaller. And this features a 3700 milliamp hour battery and 18 watt fast wireless charging. So the Pixel 4 is a smaller battery, but it's a smaller phone. So, you know, you don't suddenly get this massive difference in battery life. I like the fast charging. I am using the Google Pixel Wireless Qi charging stand. This is really great because obviously with the Pixel line, it knows and it can actually charge as fast as possible. So it's just chugging along right now. And there even knows that it's on the stand so you can put it into a certain mode where it can do like a photo slideshow and stuff while it's charging. Pretty cool actually. Now, also has six gig of RAM and your storage options are 64 gig or 128 gig. It's a hundred dollar difference between them. This is the 64 gig version. I know you can't see, it's not any thinner or thicker, right? <laughs> so let's talk about cameras, right? So on the back, it's interesting. The shape looks exactly like the iPhone 11 Pro with its three cameras, but this has two cameras. So the two cameras are a 12.2 megapixel f1.7 28 millimeter. So that's really a wide angle shot there. And a 16 megapixel f2.4 45 millimeter. From a video perspective, the rear facing camera, the one you're going to use most often, can shoot 4K at 30 frames per second. 1080p at 30, 60, or 120 frames per second, and 720p at an impressive 240 frames per second. Now, one thing I didn't say is 4K at 60 frames per second. So some people have gotten really upset about this, but I have to say I've never shot 4K video on any phone I've ever used. So I'm not sure this is super important, but if it is and you really need 4K at 60 frames per second, this ain't your phone. It just doesn't quite have that speed to be able to push that data through. But it all looks really good. In just a second, I'm going to give you some examples. Now, the front facing camera, the whole front system is actually really interesting. As you can perhaps see, let's see if I can bring up just a white screen. Um, so the top has about a maybe quarter inch black push down. So instead of having that notch or cutout or a hole punch or whatever you see on other phones, that Google has just said, you know what, we have so much going on on the top. We're not going to have those weird little edges. We're just going to have it be straight up there. So it is asymmetric. So the bottom goes much closer to the edge than the top does. But you know what? It doesn't really matter. I don't think anyone's really going to care. And frankly, you won't even notice within like 10 seconds of using the phone. 
But that does mean that they do have two forward-facing, I'm sorry, they have the one forward-facing camera, but they got a lot of other technology and a lot of other sensors, including a new sensor called motion sensor, which is a radar system. So I'll get to that in just a minute. But the front-facing camera is 8 megapixel, f2.0, 22 millimeter, and it can shoot video 1080p at 30 frames per second. So you're probably not gonna be doing a whole lot of video capture with the front-facing camera, but the rear-facing camera is really cool. Now, enough talking, let's get some examples. So first, here's just a photo I shot with the rear-facing camera, and you can see it's crystal clear, the details are beautiful. And then what I really enjoyed, though it took a while to get the hang of it, is night shot. This is a nighttime shot of my street, and notice the stars you can see in the sky. It's a little creepy how good it is, but here's the thing you need to know, is you need to hold your camera really steady, because it takes a couple of seconds for it to pull enough data in to make that shot. So if you're trying to just hold it like this, it's hard. I took that shot by having it rest on a surface, and then like I wasn't even breathing. I was just like super focused on being as still as I possibly could. Did a really nice job. Now, another one, here's this a little more wacky. This is a 3D pano. So this looks really cool. On the phone, you can move your phone around and you can see like it's this 3D sphere effect. Obviously the photo itself is a little bit more um, Dolly-esque maybe. <laughs> There's a portrait mode. You can see how it did a great job with the bokeh to give us a background that's out of focus. And then finally, let me give you a video, and this is just of a stream, so I'll be quiet and you can listen to. Did a really nice job with that stream video. I mean, it's really impressive. I really like the camera. The only thing I'll say is that I've found that the slow motion can often be out of focus or just lack of clarity, and I'm guessing that's just gonna be one software update away. So, really cool. Now, we have this motion sensor thing, so let me go, I'm gonna go into Spotify, and I don't actually have the rights to play this music, but we'll just run with it, because I wanted to show you. So here we are, and now if I do this, oh, <laughs> it doesn't work on the charging stand. Let's take that off, and let's see if I can do it not on the charging stand. There we go. So you can see, I can change tracks just by waving my hand sometimes. I think there might be an optimal distance or something. <laughs> see, live, as it happens, that's what goes on here. So, suffice to say, it works. It obviously is gonna work better if it's just sitting on the surface, maybe, maybe not, it's not working here. But be that as it may, it's kind of a neat idea, the radar. Honestly though, it's super gimmicky. This is why I haven't even tried it very much because you know, how often are you gonna be near your phone and say, oh, go to the next track? Honestly, you could probably do it with the voice system. So, it does have face unlock, and people have been saying, oh, by the way, you can unlock a face or unlock using a face where the eyes are closed. And I have verified that's true, but now face unlock doesn't work at all for me, so I don't know if they did a tiny incremental update that turned it off, but I have it. It tells me I have face data stored in the system, but when I try to unlock it with my face, it just says fail. So, I don't know whether that's a judgment on my face or what, but there's still a little bit of work to be done in that area. In terms of eyes open, eyes closed, that's just a dumb one. Come on, you know, seriously, Google, that's an easy one to figure out when you're doing face analysis. But then again, if you do have something like a fingerprint, I suppose you could also have it be where if I'm asleep and someone picks up my sleeping hand and puts it on the phone, they can unlock it. So it's not like it's this huge open privacy hole that otherwise wasn't there. But biometrics are only as good as they are, right? We've seen plenty of Hollywood movies where people pick up like a spare eyeball or something and do a retina scan. And I mean, obviously that works. It works in the movies, right? But suffice to say, is that really an issue? I don't really think so. Now, it also has a really cool app called Recorder that does voice transcripts live as you're talking. Again, something worth checking out. Google has a really cool demo on that. And then other than that, really, 
it's waterproof. Waterproof is good. Um, in the box, it includes a charging cable and a wall charger. It does not include any sort of wireless charging mechanism, which you wouldn't expect, but it also doesn't include headphones. And by the way, there's no audio jack on this either. So no 3.5 millimeter jack. It's powered by and charges through USB-C, which is cool. I'm hoping Apple will switch to that. It's a nice, simple plug and connector. And the case that Google sent me is also very nice. It's really a pretty impressive phone. You know, there's some pieces that are still feel a little bit like works in progress. I'm not at all convinced that the radar system is of any relevance and they could probably disable it and 99% of users wouldn't even know. Um, face unlock is important. It is something that they want to do. I will say that on my iPhone 10 and 10s and 11, I've really gotten used to picking up my phone and by the time I get to it, it's unlocked. That's actually pretty slick and I'm confident Google will get that all worked out too. It's not that hard. So, really the only thing left to talk about is the price and the color, I suppose. Let me pop this off so you can see the color. But before we get there, let me ask if you can subscribe to my channel. You can see my pratfalls, my stumbles, the things that don't work. More importantly, you get a really honest reviews and that's worthwhile, right? So, click that subscribe button. Super appreciate it. Great. Now, this is the Google Pixel 4 XL 6.3 inch screen. This happens to be an oh so orange, really nice. And notice they have an orange case too. The case is actually a little more muted than this really crazy orange here. You can also get it in clearly white or just black. And the Pixel 4 starts at $7.99. The Pixel 4 XL, which is the larger version, is $8.99 for the 64 gig configuration or $999 for the 128 gig configuration. This also marks the first time that Google is now working with all the major cell phone carriers here in the United States. So you can go anywhere you want from AT&T to T-Mobile and pick up one, or you can get it from Google directly, or it wouldn't surprise me if you can find it on Amazon. So <laughs> there's a lot I like about this. I think that Google's really coming along and they've come a long way with the Pixel 4. I really liked the Pixel 3a, which was just the previous generation. And one of the things I really liked about it was it was way more affordable. But this is a pretty nice flagship phone, as they say. And there's lots to check out. And having the very latest version of Android, nothing to complain about. This is a really solid option. And I think you might want to check it out if you're an Android user. So with that, I will catch you in my next video.